I don't always send my books off to get cleaned and pressed, but when I do, I send them to Canada. Hey there, today I have a CGC unboxing video and in this video, I'm going to open up a submission that was routed through Canada to Florida, back to my home in California. And the reason I routed my books in that way was because I sent these six comic books off to a presser. Uh, I think a presser that uh, is pretty well known in the community. And if you don't know him, I'd be happy to speak on his behalf. Uh, this was the comic doctor. Uh, based out of Toronto, and I found him on YouTube and um, connected with him through social media and uh, talked to him about my process and my experimentation with using third-party pressers, third-party to me, of course, and uh, we connected and, um, you know, build up a, a little rapport and decided to go ahead and take a chance and send him uh, six books. And this is part three of three of my trial of using someone else or, or some other business to clean and press my comics as opposed to trying this myself. And I have been trying to find somebody to work with that will be able to handle, uh, Not I don't have uh, Fantastic Four number one and Amazing Fantasy 15 to send around to a bunch of people and have them uh, test out that process. Uh, these are books that I feel like have significant value in a high grade, uh, but for whatever reason, I just don't feel comfortable handling the books myself. I have many books, especially moderns, brand new books. I don't mind running through the clean and press process. Uh, many of it just requires a quick press. And I feel like with, with my skills and at my skill level, I think those books are just fine. But then I have books that really I've collected raw that it really just needs a dedicated professional touch. It needs somebody who really understands what they're doing. Uh, somebody that doesn't get nervous about it uh, and, and a lot of anxiety around uh, working on your own books and making mistakes. Um, really looking for just somebody who is trusted and well established in the community. I think that person is the comic doctor. Uh, I, he is in high demand. Um, these books did take the longest to return. So if you remember, if you've watched my previous videos, I sent out two different submissions to two different pressers, and the turnaround time was somewhere like four to six weeks before uh, they were done pressing and cleaning and sent the books off to CGC. And then CGC turnaround times were what they were at that point, and I got the books back. Uh, these books were sent off to the Comic Doctor around fall of last year, fall of 2022, and recently received them a few days ago here uh, in April of 2023. Now, let me first say that not only is the comic doctor in high demand, he was also dealing with some personal and family matters uh, that it's, it's private to him, but also just kind of interrupted his schedule uh, and had every right to do so. And the one thing I will say is that throughout this process, he was apologizing to me, <laughs> which I, I kind of laugh. I, I, I don't, nothing about what was happening was funny, but I, I was just so... Uh, touched and uh, kind of caught off guard that he was just so genuine and, and nice about the process. Um, so I told him, like, I feel bad. I'm like, these are just comic books that they you take your time. Uh, so he's kind of working through his cue. He's working through uh, real life priorities and still was a gentleman and a professional throughout the entire process. The second thing is I know the grades already. And I wanted to share them with you so that you can kind of see what my experiment kind of uh, in total ended up being as far as, uh, you know, this being the third presser that I've tried. So you can see the grades. And then after you see the grades of the books, I will show you kind of a summary uh, in terms of the six books, what it cost me to acquire them, what it cost me to have these books cleaned and pressed through the comic doctor. And did I add ultimately any value to my collection by going through him, um, you know, and understanding that there's additional costs uh, from me coming from Southern California to Toronto and paying for additional shipping, customs, and things like that. So there, uh, you know, were some additional costs involved, additional time involved, and ultimately, 
I want to know, is it worth it? And so at the very end of this video, after the grade reveals, I'll show you uh, kind of a, a report that summarizes my experience to see ultimately if these books were worth sending to the comic doctor uh, based on their results. Let's go ahead and get the slabs out, take a look at the six books that I sent to the comic doctor for cleaning and pressing, and then we'll look at the numbers at the very end to see was it all worth it. But first things first, let's get the slabs out of the box. All right, here we go. The first book is Spectacular Spider-Man number 56. And this book, uh, I, I love this one. It is a Frank Miller cover. This book is particularly tough to get in high grade because of the, the, the black webbing in the background. Uh, it's a great Frank Miller cover. Uh, this is the second appearance of Jack-O-Lantern. You know, I'd probably say maybe like a tier B Spider-Man villain, uh, but really just a, I think, you know, spectacular Spider-Man always kind of took a backseat to Amazing Spider-Man. And uh, there's always some kind of hidden gems between spectacular and web. Uh, if I collect, I'm a big collector of Amazing Spider-Man, but uh, really was buying spectacular and web as well. Uh, this book's from 1981. And this book got a 9.4. Now I sent this one in because I knew this would be a tough book, but I really thought that it was in pretty good shape as it was. And for the most part, um, it still looks to be in great shape. I think that there are, you know, some spine ticks here, but uh, it, it really doesn't look too bad. Uh, I'm actually quite surprised that this one got a 9.4. There's a little bit of, of softening up here on the the outer corner of the front cover, but looks great. Uh, I love this book. I I wanted to send this one, like I said, I felt like this one would be a little bit of a challenge just because of the color scheme being used. And I also had several copies of this too. So I felt like, well, if it didn't work out, um, then I had some backup copies as well. But I, I think I have to examine it a little bit more closely, but uh, the book looks gorgeous. It really does. Uh, it's very well centered, presents well. Um, it got the 9.4 white pages, which is awesome. I'm really having a hard time trying to see what is wrong with this one. There's uh, some scuffing on the back of the slab that's giving a little bit of a shadow, but it, it looks great. It's a great looking book. Uh, I really don't know how much more could have been done to this book to get it higher than a 9.4. Um, if I were Looking at this book in this slab, I would actually consider cracking it, but it doesn't have that much value. It's probably not worth the trouble. So there's the first one, Spectacular Spider-Man number 56 in a CGC 9.4. The next one is Black Panther number seven. This is from 1978. And if I remember right, I got this from Professor's Comics on Atomic Avenue. And I remember uh, getting this book and looking at it and uh, just seeing how striking, uh, strikingly white the back cover was. It just, the colors were, were all great in this one. Just uh, Jack Kirby, great Black Panther cover. But I was happily surprised at the condition uh, of a book from 1978. And uh, again, it, what I ended up trying to do was like, I took books that were of a certain value in the grade that I thought these books were. And it was somewhere between 8.5 and 9.2, in some cases 9.4, and really felt like, well, in a worst case scenario, if they came back at those grades, then, you know, I'm again, I'm dealing with a break-even situation, but there was something about this book that I really loved uh, in terms of the condition and presentation quality and thought uh, if the comic doctor could work his magic on this one, this one had a shot at a 9.8. And in fact, this book did get a 9.8. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I've been wanting to get this book back and see it. And yeah, it looks magnificent. And I felt like it just needed a little bit uh, more. And I can still, I can still see, and I don't know if this is reversion, uh, but there are still a couple of minor ticks. I'm counting four. Uh, but really, I think that the corners on this book are so super sharp everywhere uh, that I, I I just felt like it was something about this book that I thought had an excellent shot at getting the 9.8. Uh, this is, I believe, the oldest 9.8 that I have. 
uh, I'm just amazed to see something, a, a comic of this age, uh, come back in such a high grade. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, Jack Kirby's story, uh, interiors, uh, and Jack Kirby art, along with Ernie Chan, the first appearance of Aluma Bashenga. Uh, so really, really cool. <laughs> Black Panther at number seven, just outstanding. Uh, very, very neat to have a, a book of this age in a, in a 9.8. Okay, the next book is a book that I've had in my personal collection since I was young, and it's uh, Uncanny X-Men 145 from 1981. Uh, and as I was going through a lot of my X-Men, I, I really wanted to get a couple of X-Men books slabbed. Uh, I've always loved this Doctor Doom cover with Storm, and again, felt like it was a book that just had general creasing, a lot of pressable defects, but was in my personal collection, bagged and boarded for decades. And I knew the way that I've treated these books that they all have the potential to be uh, in super high grade. But if things didn't work out, I wouldn't be too disappointed if I didn't get uh, a 9.8. And this one did not get a 9.8. It got a 9.4 white pages, which is great. It's still a, a wonderful book, a great cover. But I think as I'm looking at it, the color breaking ticks, particularly around the staples, is probably what did this one in. So this one, as opposed to the first book, I can actually see why it didn't get the 9.8. I may have selected this one just because I wanted it in the slab, uh, but I, I wanted to give a nice cross section of books. So this was an, a book that I had in my collection for a long time. Other books were more recently re acquired. They were all acquired from different sources too, so I think that's interesting. But yeah, down here at the bottom, uh, there's a color breaking tick by the bottom corner and then also along the side here uh, by the staples. So that's unfortunate. Nothing the comic doctor could have done with that, uh, nor could have I, but just outstandingly, uh, strikingly white. Uh, love getting the white pages designation on this, but one of the all-time great Dave Cockrum covers to Uncanny X-Men 145 from 1981. Next is Fantastic Four 211. This is the first appearance of Terax, and there's also a, a Galactus appearance in this book. And this is one of those that's, uh, to me, has a little bit of sneaky value in, in a 9.8. And, and honestly, that other than the first appearance of Terax, uh, the, the value of the book was the, the main driver of sending this book in. Um, just the potential was, was too great. So it was one of those books that I knew if it came back at, you know, in the 9094, then we're, again, we're dealing with kind of a, a break-even situation and was, again, just trying to push things to see just how far uh, I could get a grade. And this book ended up getting a 9.4. Uh, again, another particularly tough cover. And as I look at it in the slab, uh, there are three color-breaking ticks right here on the edge. And then a little bit of softening up here in the, the corner. So... You know, that's too bad. Uh, just moving it back and forth in the light, I do see just a couple of creases along the spine too. And I, again, I just worry about reversion. I, I hope that's not the case. Uh, but I think it didn't matter ultimately in this one with the color breaking ticks. Just something I missed. I, I think having like kind of thought about the condition before it was worked on, it probably had no business of even being in a nine because of the, the corner, the three ticks, some creasing it looked like maybe it could max a 9.0. So the fact that this book was worked on and got a 9.4 was probably about as high as it can go. I think that it did ultimately get the max grade on it. But the 9.8 value was just so tempting that I had to send it in and give it a try. But I think next time, more on me, uh, particularly with these books from like the late 70s, uh, some of the Copper Age books that I typically look at. But but I think for me, when I'm looking at a lot of the Bronze Age, the, the books in the 70s, uh, late 70s, early 80s, I really, really need to make sure that they are color break free uh, before sending these books in for work. Because I know if I'm going to work on books and there's color breaks, it almost feels like, is this really worth it? Is it worth to put in the, the extra time and the trouble to work on a book that has soft corners and color breaks? But again, like I said, I think I was just, I was drawn in and... Uh, just tempted by the 9.8 value of this book. Uh, and it is, this is one of those like lessons learned, like you can't 
will a book into the grade that you want it to be. You have to be really accurate and uh, set your expectations up correctly because, yeah, this was probably more of an 8.59 that maxed the 9.4. And while I think it did get the bump ultimately, or at least it got what we were expecting it to be as a 9.4, it had no shot at a 9.8. But kind of like side by side with Spectacular Spider-Man 56, uh, similar color scheme. Great book, 9.4 white pages, very presentable, fun books. Okay, two more books to go, and this one is Man-Thing number one. And all kidding aside about uh, Man-Thing, this book is from 1979. This is the second series of Man-Thing, and right in the fall of 2022 was the werewolf by night one shot that was on disney plus man thing made an appearance in that one shot or standalone episode and i thought they did a great job with man thing and i have been picking up this book from mile high comics uh you know as often as i can and just just kind of fell in love with this cover uh, this is from 1979 so not necessarily a key book even though it is a number one issue but I really thought that this book had a lot of potential as far as condition and wanted to send it in, and it got a 9.8. 9.8 white pages, cover art by Bob Wyasek, and the origin of the Man-Thing retold, which is not surprising in a, a new number one of this character. And just looking at the condition, the, the back looks completely clean, just some very, very light tanning, but really nothing at all. Corners are sharp, and I'm moving this one back and forth just to see if there's any creasing. I don't see any. This really looks pristine and gorgeous, so great, great work on this one. Uh, kind of fits in so nicely with the, the Bronze Age horror books that I'm starting to pick up, and I just love this one, love the, love the colors the artwork and the fact that it looks as in as good a shape as you would expect a comic to be in a 9.8. I don't see reversion or anything. Uh, again, everything looks really, really sharp. So very, very happy with this one. Uh, this is awesome. Man Thing number one from 1979, CGC 9.8 white pages. All right, and the last book. Uh, again, I feel like I, I did end up sending him, uh, I don't want to say more difficult books to work on, but I, I wanted to really kind of test out the service and really test out his skills. Again, with books that are just tough, not necessarily books that are a holy grails. Uh, wasn't comfortable sending uh, those sorts of books uh, quite yet to when I hadn't experienced, uh, you know, the process and the service. But this book I thought was definitely a challenge. And this is X-Men number 140 from 1980. In this book, Alpha Flight disbands. We've got the Wendigo appearance. But I just love this. I've always loved this cover. I thought that, you know, this should be some sort of key book. Uh, something having to do with uh, Wendigo and, and Wolverine and the Chris Claremont story and Burn. And it's not, it's, it is not a super, like, desirable key book. But I think that collectors of X-Men have always loved and recognized this cover. And always particularly tough to get in high grade because of the black background in the top half of the book. And this was one that I bought from an LCS, which I don't actually shop at really all that often. In fact, this particular LCS has closed <laughs> since I've been there. I had nothing to do with it closing. It's just uh, coincidental, but uh, just my luck. Um, I walked into the store. Uh, they had just finished a claim sale, live claim sale, and this book didn't sell. Uh, and I, I noticed like the claim sale setup in the LCS and wandered over there. And uh, I just asked the owner, I said, are, are you kind of prepping these books for a, or for a claim sale? And he said, no, uh, we had one last night. These were the books that didn't sell. I can cut you a deal. Like he just felt kind of bummed, like, well, these are good books, but they didn't sell at the price I wanted them to sell. But, you know, and I, I think I ended up getting like five or ten bucks off of the few books that I picked up. But this was one of them. I remember looking at it on the table going, man, in person, this this book looks gorgeous. Um, I didn't expect it to get a 9.8, but after the comic doctor worked on it, it did get a 9.8, and I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, this is awesome. Uh, this is really cool. This is a, a particularly tough book, as I mentioned, and it almost is spine tick free. I noticed one right here by Nightcrawler's head in the character box, but other than that, the book looks um, just gorgeous. 
The back is very, very vibrant white. We got the 9.8 white pages. All of these books got white pages. Uh, so just thrilled. Uh, this is, <laughs> of, of all the books that I sent away for cleaning and pressing, uh, this getting the 9.8, uh, I'm a huge Uncanny X-Men fan. Uh, John Byrne on cover, uh, just, you know, right in, in sort of your classic X-Men comic book fan wheelhouse. Uh, Claremont and Byrne, Terry Austin on inks. Just such a great dynamic cover and I'm just super thrilled and super happy to have this in my collection. Uh, X-Men number 140 from 1980. So there you go. There are the results. Uh, those are the six books that I sent in for cleaning and pressing to the Comic Doctor. Uh, three got 9.4, three got 9.8. Uh, let me show you what I paid for the books originally. Let me show you the cost involved in all of this. And then ultimately, uh, what kind of value did I add to my collection or did I add any value at all? Let's find out. Okay, here is the summary of me sending uh, six books to the Comic Doctor. And I ended up getting two of the books from Mile High Comics, uh, Man-Thing number one and Fantastic Four 211. Spectacular Spider-Man 56 I got from Capco Comics. Black Panther number seven from Professor's Comics. Uncanny X-Men 145 was my personal copy from when I was a kid. And X-Men 140 I got from a local LCS out in Southern California. So I put the total amount of the books and the actual cost involved and then my predictions for the grades. Uh, at the time, I thought Fantastic Four 211 was an 8.5 and I think it was graded accurately by me at the time. Uh, I think that because it had those color breaks, I just didn't think about this enough to know. Like it's Even though I was attracted to that 9.8 value, there was a reason I gave it an 8.5. Uh, Man Thing number one, I thought was a 9.2. Uh, Spectacular Spider Man 56, 9.4. Black Panther number seven, I thought was a 9.0. Uncanny X Men 145, 9.4. Uh, X Men 140, 9.4. Uh, I have the fair market value of the books raw, uh, the CGC value of the books at the grade that I gave the books, and then my total cost. So my total cost to acquire the books raw was $117.85. And then there's the cost to grade the books on top of that that will add to the, uh, the overall cost. Over here on the left too, I don't know if you saw this, but what I ended up doing was figuring out what was my total cost door to door to ship the books to the comic doctor, have him work on these six books, and then the additional money I had to pay for him to ship the books from him to CGC. And what it ended up costing me is $25.69 per book, which was a lot higher than the other two pressers that I used because of the additional money spent to have the books to go through customs uh, and just the, the movement of the books from Southern California to Toronto, Canada, and then from the Comic Doctor to CGC, and that's where the additional cost in terms of uh, getting the books worked on came from. So again, I like to look at all cost involved uh, down to the penny, uh, if possible, or as close to it to give the most reasonable of expectations in terms of what this is going to cost. So this is where if you're looking at kind of like that $100 book. So if we're looking at a book like Spectacular Spider-Man 56 and it has a CGC value of around $100, this is where it's getting kind of borderline in terms of, well, uh, you know, do I want to spend $26 essentially to have this book uh, cleaned and pressed before I spend another $26 to $30 to have this book graded? Is it all going to end up being worth it? Uh, it cost me only $9 to acquire though, so that's why I went ahead and uh, added this into the queue. You know, but if you're looking at a, a $20 to $30 cost of a book plus the, the $26 and then the $30 to grade it, and you're looking at a $100 slab, your margin is basically next to nothing. Uh, if you go to sell a book um, and then there's fees involved or you're just looking to add value, you're just not adding a whole lot. You may as well keep the book raw. So it all comes down to numbers. Uh, it, you know, Once you've decided to purchase what I call the right books, meaning these are the books that have the potential uh, from sources that you trust to, that are giving you that potential, then you're looking at the cost of all of the things and you're doing the math and saying, yes, there's enough value left over 
that would be significant to add to my collection or at least get the book uh, preserved and encased uh, if you're thinking that the book could go up in value over time. But uh, rather than me predicting what a book could be worth someday, I'm really looking more of uh, what the value is currently on books from uh, a particular era, because I believe over time, uh, these books from 1979, 78, 80, 81, um, that these are all books that I think will continue to appreciate uh, as time passes. Okay, so anyway, back to the numbers. So I have kind of like a raw value profit thing here, CGC profit, like if I'm able to get this book graded and I'm looking at cost, um, you know, again, this is before cleaning and pressing. And I'm just trying to see like in a worst case scenario, if the books came back precisely in the grade that I thought it would get, then what did I actually add to my collection in terms of value? And in this column AE, this does not take into account the comic doctor's fees. So I just want to be clear about that as well. This is pulled from more of my ledger where I'm just looking at what if I just send the book in to and if I were to send these six books in, I would stand to add about $75 of value. So then I was trying to figure out, okay, well, what if they got a bump? So with all of these books, what I end up trying to figure out is uh, if I've got a grade before here in column AL, then it, as we move over left to right, I've got uh, sort of these values and a potential value gain. So X-Men 140, 145, Black Panther 7, etc. cetera, uh, I have their 9.8 values here in this column and then 9.6 and 9.4, where if I can take a 9.4 and if it could be pressed and clean, what kind of value could I potentially be adding? You could see here, uh, Fantastic Four 211 and a 9.8 at uh, $867 and a 9.8, which is again, it, it seems crazy and outrageous, but uh, I that's the potential, uh, or at least it was at the time that I sent the books in. And I was, again, just kind of uh, teased, if you will, around the potential value there. All right, now if we're looking at sort of the updated cost, so this is column CJ. Uh, this is the total cost to not only acquire the book raw, uh, but it also takes into account the comic doctor's fee per book, as well as the CGC cost, which I have about, they're both around $26 each. That's kind of, uh, to, to kind of keep the math easy, but also just an es general estimate. So about $52, which does include shipping to have a book cleaned and pressed by the comic doctor and have it returned. So when you're talking about $52 and you're trying to reach that $100 or more mark, you want to make sure that you've acquired the book for I would say, you know, to, to have a kind of a decent value add, you know, roughly $25 or less. Uh, so those are kind of the books that it's hard to find those specific type of books. I have the analysis and I have the data. So I'm able to kind of find those needles in the haystacks. But that's kind of my thinking is like, can this book hit that minimum $100 in a CGC slap? So CJ is the column that has the total cost updated. So my total investment in these six books, $430.21. That's to acquire the book, have it go through the comic doctor and have it professionally graded by something else just to keep in mind. This is six comic books. They're kind of random, not super keys, not super desirable books, fun books, great books, uh, happy to have them in my collection. But when you're talking about $430 of investment, you want to make sure that this money's being spent in the right place to hopefully generate as much potential. And that's exactly why I decided to invest in these books and invest in the Comic Doctor. So we've got my grade here in column CK again, and then the value of the books in CGC, kind of a repeat before. And then in column CM, this is where I take the value of the book in the grade that I thought it would get if it ran through the Comic Doctor. <laughs> then what is the true value? And if I were to get all six books back in the exact grades that I thought they were raw, basically meaning that he charged me and didn't do anything, <laughs> which uh, I got to say the other two uh, pressers, it sort of, that's kind of what it looked like. So I had to build in this analysis here just to see like, okay, um, what if nothing happens? What, what, what if the grades come back precisely in the grades that I thought? 
I would have lost $215.80. So there was a bit of a risk here uh, sending these books in these grades, but I really did think, I truly believe that in the right hands, all six of these books had potential. And the potential uh, they did have, uh, and his work proved that out. I put the final grades here, uh, 9.8 for X-Men 140, a CGC value of 310, uh, 9.4 at 92 for X-Men 145, Black Panther 7, over $300 in a 9.8, Spectacular Spider-Man 56, uh, hitting the uh, $100 mark, just getting over that at 105.67 in a 9.4. Man Thing number one, 9.8. I thought this would be worth more than what it is, but uh, only $137 in a 9.8. I'll still take it. And Fantastic Four 211, $109.67 in a 9.4 for a total CGC value of $1,070.34. And lastly, just comparing the final value of these books graded by CGC against the total cost, again, the full round trip to buy the book, send it off, have it sent from the comic doctor to CGC back to me, I have now added $640.13 of value to my collection. Now, I hope that that answers the question around, was it worth it? Yes, <laughs> yes, it was worth it, particularly Black Panther 7 and X-Men 140. Absolute stunning, gorgeous 9.8s. Uh, just thrilled uh, at, at the work that was done by the comic doctor, yes. But the fact that he remained professional he persevered through his personal challenges and also just has a tremendous backlog uh, of books being sent to him. He's popular for a reason. He's on YouTube. You can check him out at The Comic Doctor. Uh, he does a lot of live shows, talks about pressing and cleaning, very entertaining. And I feel, I don't know, it sounds corny, but kind of honored and blessed that I was able to kind of go through this process. Uh, you know, let's be honest, I'm I'm thrilled with the grades too. Um, this, these are great books that have added value to my collection and, and can't thank him enough for that. But the whole process, it just felt good. It felt like even when there were delays, the fact that he was apologizing and he was in communication with me, uh, that it's just, uh, that's exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for somebody that regardless of the grades was always in proper communication. Uh, everything was cataloged and invoiced and, and very systematic in terms of payment and things like that. And it felt very much like what I would expect it to. I would expect it to feel more like a business transaction, but then also along the side, being able to develop a business relationship as well, to be able to talk to somebody and I, I would gladly pay extra for anybody that is that professional, um, that really takes pride in their work, but also takes pride in treating customers correctly uh, and communicating and, and getting back. And, and the fact that um, he did that on a regular basis with just me, when I know he probably has uh, hundreds and thousands of customers, um, and if he doesn't, he probably will eventually, uh, and hopefully uh, by this video getting out, um, some of uh, the good word about the, the work that he's doing will continue to spread. But very, very pleased. Please check out The Comic Doctor on YouTube. Uh, I, I hope to reach out to him again soon to see if we can do another, uh, I'm not even going to call it an experiment anymore because I think it is totally legit um, and very, very pleased with the work that was done with my uh, precious collectibles. Uh, I had one of these books that I had, uh, had since I was a child. So um, there was a lot of trust uh, involved in all of this and really appreciate uh, everything that the comic doctor did uh, for me and for uh, my comics, uh, several of which that I'll get up on the wall. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.